the impact of the semiconductor shortage on the car industry has been revealed. The chip crunch that's to blame for so many stock delays is expected to cost automakers nearly 300 billion US dollars in lost revenue around the world this year. But it's also left the door open for enormous amount of disruption from companies that can build the cars to take sales away from those that cannot. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you. Thanks for coming on the channel. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for supporting the movement. Now, research by consultancy firm Alex Partners has demonstrated the colossal scale of the semiconductor shortage that's largely responsible for the long customer waiting lists we're seeing across the car industry. Industry research firm IHS Marquis doesn't expect supply to get to where it needs to be to meet demand until 2023. If that is true, there will be serious repercussions for all car brands, dealers and buyers crying out for stock. Now remember, during this period of time, car sales for Chinese manufacturers have, in many cases, doubled and tripled. So clearly they are taking some of the sales away from Western brands, Japanese car makers, European car makers, and even American car makers. According to the new data supplied by Alex Partners, the total hit to revenue across the world's automakers attributable to a lack of chips just for 2021 is around 210 billion US dollars, or around about 290 billion Australian dollars. Now, the firm also predicted 2021's total new vehicle output would decline by 7.7 million vehicles, double the previous estimate. This is because car makers of all stripes are slowing up and shuttering production. Personally, I'm not convinced. I think this is definitely affecting the industry. But I think what's affecting it more is kind of a post pandemic decline. The pandemic stimulated buying. I think. We're now seeing a trend that's actually followed on from about 2015, 2016, 2017, where since then, car sales globally have declined every year. However, as summarized by Bloomberg, despite ongoing efforts to shore up the supply chain, semiconductor availability has worsened as automakers, exhaust stockpiles, and other industries have no more to spare. Now, the worldwide chip or semiconductor crunch is affecting various complex industries, and with cars now bristling with active safety features and switch touchscreens they're particularly affected i mean electric cars actually need more semiconductor chips than ice vehicles so the increase in electric car sales in theory would actually decrease global global supply more quickly than an increase in ice car sales obviously we're seeing the reverse happening i mean a decrease in ice car sales and a significant increase in plug-in battery car sales and pure bev car sales as well now, the reasons for this crunch are numerous, but in essence, it's huge demand for gadgets and ginormous supply side disasters or the, on the tiny gizmos that allow them to actually work. It's a supply chain failure of epic scale. Now, demand for appliances spiked during COVID, meaning chips were reallocated to where demand lay, especially since car makers cut back outputs early in the pandemic. This had trickle-on effects given lead times, and it reportedly led to stockpiling by some manufacturers. This makes sense. I mean, what did people do during the pandemic? Well, apparently the pandemic is still going on here in Australia, but what did people do during the last 18 months? On different occasions when there was lockdowns, many people all, all over the world reported seeing these enormous shortages of products where there shouldn't have been a shortage because people were panic buying. So it seems as though this may have happened in the industry as well, in the car industry. Then after that, you had a blizzard shutter a Texas chip maker, a Japanese plant fire, and continual plant closures or slowdowns due to COVID Delta outbreaks, particularly those that happened recently in Malaysia, notably across different hubs in Asia. It also takes some time to scale up production and make more factories. In fact, it takes many years. The barrel is empty. There's nothing left to scrape, said Alex Partners, Managing Director of Automotive and Industrial Practice, Dan Hirsch, quoted in Bloomberg. Going forward, sales will suffer. Sales hasn't suffered because 
there was enough inventory to draw from. It's not there anymore. It certainly feels like the most protracted supply shortage the industry has seen because it's not over. It's certainly the most far-reaching. This is every place. This is everybody, he added. Well, sorry, it's not everybody because if we look at, like I just said, many car manufacturers in China have doubled or tripled their sales. So they seem to have not had many issues for some of those manufacturers. That said, it's reported that a couple of Chinese car manufacturers were paying 100 times up to 1,000 times more for black market chips in order to get their cars out. But somehow at the same time, other manufacturers haven't been affected. So it's sort of puzzling to me, to be honest. Now, for a second opinion, just last week, automotive research firm IHS Marquette slashed its global light vehicle production forecast by 5 million units for 2021, 8.5 million units in 2022, and by 1 million units in 2023. In fact, more than 1 million units. That's a huge number affected by a chip shortage. Now, the firm called it the largest single adjustment to the outlook in what has been a turbulent past nine months. If the first half of the year was defined by front-end issues disrupting automotive MCUs, microcontrollers, then the second half of the year and the coming months are increasingly defined by back-end issues affecting all semiconductor applications, not just automotive. IHS Marquis continued saying this wider disruption beyond automotive is contributing to reduced expectations for both 2021 and 2022. Signaling that even without further external shocks, levels of capacity dedicated to automotive will remain below those required to meet ongoing demand and well below what would be required to allow stock levels to be rebuilt. Ongoing imbalances between supply and demand of semiconductors are now expected. Well, interestingly, Elon Musk recently commented, didn't he, about the effect of this semiconductor chip shortage on Tesla. He said if Tesla had five more models of cars, they still wouldn't have been able to produce any more cars or at least sell any more cars to the market because they could only produce the number they were able to produce. They were just simply supply constrained by semiconductor chips. And you can see that reflected in Tesla's order backlog in the United States, where they have up to six to eight months order backlog for some of their models. Clearly, the demand is increasing. Tesla is increasing the prices, and still the demand is continuing to increase for their cars. And it appears as though the only thing stopping them from delivering them is the semiconductors. So I'm kind of happy I invested months ago in BYD because. BYD makes their own semiconductors, and this year they've more than doubled their car sales. They haven't been affected at all by this. In fact, the interesting thing is, right, the start of this year, less than 50% of their vehicles were plug-ins or full battery electric cars. Now, 88% of them are. So they've gone from a position where they need way more semiconductors because actually their sales have more than doubled. But in addition to that, you can triple that again because the vehicles they're now selling need more semiconductors than the vehicles they were selling last year. Obviously, because they make their own, it hasn't affected them, and they've been able to increase sales while other manufacturers have significantly declined in sales. For example, companies like Hyundai, Ford, General Motors, their sales this year have significantly, significantly declined versus 2019. In some cases, they're only half of what they were in 2019. That's huge. So if you're planning on investing in stocks, personally, I own Tesla, BYD, and Xpeng then the way you can do that is by jumping on stake, create a stake account. If you use my code in the, in your, when you create your account, you can actually get free stocks. So it makes sense. There's no other way to get free stocks other than to use someone's code. So I'll put my code in the description below. If you do decide to create an account now, I think it's a really good time. I think we're at this point in history where right now we're still only at about 8% of all cars in the world are electric right now. About 8% of all car sales over the last few months in, in the world were electric. We're at a point in which we're transitioning very quickly to all electric cars. By 2030, I believe at least 98% of the global car market will be electric. So there's a huge amount of money going from here to here because that involves opportunities like lithium mining, batteries companies. BYD is also a battery company, the fourth largest battery company in the world. 
you can see the opportunity and the potential. Now, if you're watching this video for the first time, I've made over 500 videos this year on similar issues on electric cars, on battery makers, on where you can invest. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out some of those other videos. I'll put some of those videos in the description below that I think would benefit you. Thanks for watching the channel and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.